for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese has always got another free ebook for you guys today. For this month, I'm going to do a defensive ebook. Last month, I did the 49ers offensive ebook. I have a link in the description for that video if you guys didn't catch that. But just like last time, I tell you guys every single month, I try to put out a free breakdown of an entire offense or defense. But you guys got to let me know in the comment section what defense or offense you guys want to see next. Today's going to be the Kansas City Chiefs defense, which is not a defensive playbook that I use, but a lot of people consider this the meta. Since the game came out, Kansas City Chiefs defense has really been considered one of the metas in this game and I'm giving you guys to that free this is also my most up-to-date defensive ebook is this the last one that I made it's not like I said it's not the one that I use I still recommend multi D or Miami defense those are my two favorites by Woo! far if you guys want to see them in the future hit the like button let me know in the comment section if you want to continue this series hit the like button let me know in the comment section make sure to be a subscriber other than that the point of me doing this series other than giving you guys good content so that people that don't buy my ebooks still have good offenses and defenses to run is to show you guys what my ebooks offer all the plays you're going to see in these videos are segmented clips from my actual ebooks. You basically click the link and it takes you right to that play. I put them all together to make these full breakdown videos. So if you guys want to check that out, check out these ebooks or any of my ebooks. I will have links in the description as well as links in the top pinned comment. So if you want to check that out, links in the description. Other than that, let's get right into the video. Next up, we have the cover four quarters. This setup is pretty much going to be the same, only this time I have to baseline and show blitz. Uh, you know, and I'd like to baseline again so this cornerback drops back, but if I do that, you'll see what happens. I'll baseline one more time, everybody goes back. So I don't want that just for that one cornerback. So I have to baseline show blitz just one time, then I have to manually walk this cornerback a couple yards. Then I'm going to pinch my defensive line and spread them, slide them outside, I mean, and zone all linebackers, guess pass. Like I said, it's a big setup, but I've been doing this for so long. I've been doing this for since probably Madden 20 when this formation came out. So to me, it's really quick. I can come over the middle again, but in reality, it's best to just do, like I said, just make sure you're mirroring the running back that will always be the most successful and i'm just going to press and release this guy here you can see we get that a gap the exact same way it's going to work the exact same way always mirror the running back if you mirror the running back you will get this result well you'll always get the uh, the a gap pressure and then once again we have two guys we have a double team going on here in this cluster i walk away and i'm the only mid zone but like i said it's a very fast blitz so i'm willing to give that up so that i can get these instant pressures but a lot of times a lot of times i will set this up and then just run it as a four-man pressure do the exact same thing sometimes i'll put them on a, a hard flat just so my opponent thinks those flats are there and then i just run this like a regular pass defense i'll come in this scenario i'll come down with my user, put them on a blitz, try to give my guys a little bit of help before I drop back. But in reality, you know, you see the center's blocking nobody, the running back blocking nobody. But in reality, this is not this is not the better of the two. It's only give up a couple yards, really. But sometimes you can bait your opponent into throwing, you know, interceptions in the flats or something like that because they're expecting that crazy heat. So it's 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 important to mix this in, even though this is not necessarily, you know, the blitz is really the reason I would use this play other than a run defense. I mean, you can see he's taking the check down as I'm just not giving up a bigger route. So this here, like I said, it's really it's just a good idea to do that every once in a while to try to catch your opponent off guard and maybe throw some easy interceptions. This is a good run defense, but it's not as good as the 3-4. Uh, uh, but still, cover fours are very good. And you can see I can baseline show blitz baseline. In this scenario, I'm just going to walk this guy back in. You know what I mean? Sometimes, based off the formation, he'll walk out to the receiver. In this scenario, it's best to be the baseline show blitz baseline. Then I'll do my, my setup like normal. I'll hard flat. This is pretty much going to be the look. And then this is something where I can try to shoot this center gap sometimes. Uh, even though it's really tiny, um, it is possible depending on what happens like pre-snap like right here I probably could have shot that but I'd much rather take away that outside run as you can see we get an easy stop The safeties once again will walk down and make a play. This is basically like a nine-man run commit You'll see how I don't know what I hit there You'll see how the safeties if I highlight them if I watch them the safeties drop back or drop down the quarterbacks drop back So if I didn't come down here, I mean the safety made the play. It looks like I stretched it out I really was just there to help this safety made the play behind the line of scrimmage I mean, how do you how do you beat that? You know, I mean if you have if, and, if for whatever reason this must be a unique play because you can see on this other side here They look like they're running routes 
the safety doesn't let it go. Like he actually covers that route, even though typically the safeties in cover four will walk down and play the run. He's smart enough to treat it like it's a possible pass play. And then on the side where there's no receiver, he walks down and makes the play. Like I said, cover four, cover four cores especially is one of the best run defenses. It's also a very good pass defense as well. Next up out of the four, three, even six, one, make sure you have your fastest linebackers on the edge one more time. The first play I'm going to pick is going to be the Sam Will Blitz. So this play here you can run a couple different ways. I'm going to pinch my defensive line, which is D-pad to the left and down. Then I'm going to hit D-pad to the left again and up on the right, stick the slant them outside. Then I'm going to blitz all linebackers and guest pass. That's pretty much going to be the setup, although I did mess up the linebacker. He was right in a good spot. That's fine, though. I typically have him back like that. Then I'll just take one of these deep outside linebackers typically, especially if it's a shotgun. Uh, whatever side of the, um, the quarterback the running back is, I will bring that guy in. And then I'll basically do the drop back on the running back or drop back over the middle. That's pretty much the idea. But bringing them in like this, a lot of times we'll shift the defensive line in my direction. Uh, you can see we get some pressure there, although it was like a second effort pressure. Go ahead and we'll do that again. Like I said, I run this blitz so much, you can see how quickly I, I set it up. Although, for some reason, the outside, um, you know, it's not really letting me pinch that defensive line the way that I normally do, but that's fine. So let's go ahead and let's do this again. You can use her this guy too. I mean, I can just drop straight back. Like at a formation like this where the running back is not really in a specific spot from one side, left to the right. Like I said, against shotgun, I want to be on the same side as the running back. But since the running back's right in the middle, I can basically come down right over the middle and then I can chip off this guy and you can see we get like an instant sack. Now there I was, I did get caught on 60 a little bit longer than I wanted to. I was barely off that uh, that pickup by the time the sack came in. You can see he went right around the running back too. I mean, it's a play action. He's meant to block, uh, but you can see he gets right around that. And by the time the play ends, once again, the running back was blocking, but he was blocking nobody. Number 60 was blocking, but he was blocking nobody. And number 85 was on some sort of, I guess he comes across in the formation. I mean, this this play here only has two routes. Uh, everybody's blocking except for the two routes. So we have five linemen, two tight ends, and a, and a running back. So that's eight guys against a six-man pressure. And I still get two guys blocking nobody to the point where, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just I'll, I'll take that. Instant sack, under center, pretty much every time. So here we got our set. That was a lot quicker. Like I said, I do this so much. You can see how easy it is for me to do. I like leaving the... Um, this, this guy here can get a lot of A-gap pressure, but in this formation, I think it's going to be best. Like I said, you're basically mirroring the running back. Since the running back's right in front, I'm gonna, my user's going to be right in front. If he's off to the left, I'm going to be on this guy. If he's off to the right, I'm going to be on this guy, bringing him in and doing that setup. But since he's in the middle, I'm going to come in the middle. And like I said, just make sure you get some pass every single time. I'm going to try to contact the center and then drop back before um you know before too long you see we get another instant sack uh because that's pretty much just how it's going to be with that play action they'd have to cancel that play action to get any success there <clears throat> i will go ahead and i'll pick a shotgun we'll go with the uh the pa slot corner like i said this is going to be a play where i'm going to want to come in like this so that the, the, it's a play action, but the, the looping outside linebacker should get around it before the running back is capable of picking him up. And then he does pick him up, but then like I said, you get that A-gap pressure. That's why I typically like that linebacker in that spot. So we'll go to the replay. Like I said, this is a five, we have five blockers, and then we have the running back block, and the running back does his job. Um, by the time I walk away though, like I said, that's why you that's why I'm in tight like this. I want to draw attention first. I want a lineman to pick me up because I know I'm going to be in coverage and uh, by the time I walk away and I'm in coverage, you already have an A gap just coming screaming right up the middle for an instant sack. Next up we have the LB Sting 1. Once again, run this opposite the running back. It's pretty much the same setup. I'm just going to um, you know, pinch my defensive line, bring my user down the gap. I mean, I got to remember to drop back on that running back. Wherever the running back goes, I got to follow him. And that's pretty much it. I mean, if I really want to, I could use the, the safety, but that's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit much. I don't know why the safety is so far down the box, too. That's kind of weird. But that's not my concern right now because, like I said, I'm just working on the blitz. You can see that dude just looped in right past the, uh, the running back as nobody really recognized him. I'm going to replay again. Like I said, he just kind of shoots right past, and there's two guys that really didn't look at him. Like I said, this is a pretty glitchy uh, loop blitz. Loop blitzes are the thing. You don't have to flip the play like I am. I just keep forgetting to flip the play. 
I don't know why this guy's doing that. Hold on. Might have messed that up. But, uh, but yeah. So you don't have to flip the play. I just keep forgetting to flip the play pre-snap when I call the play. This is part of the problem. Like I said, I just stay on for half a second and boom, just coming right around for an easy sack. Next up, we'll choose the Sam Edge 3. So I'm just going to pinch the defense, keep it contained, bring the user down over the center, and guess pass. That's all I really got to do. We're going to get another looping pressure. Or well, you can see there, got a little bit of switch pressure as we get the defensive tackle right through Jordan Davis. Watch the instant replay. Like I said, it looks like, you know, I don't know if that was, it looks like he just shedded, but you can see if the running back wasn't blocking, the blitzer would have got around the edge anyway. Next up, we'll choose the Sam Edge 3. So I'm going to pinch the defensive line, then I'm going to slant them outside. Then I'm going to, actually I already did it wrong. I'm going to make sure the, the blitzing guy is always coming off the opposite side of the running back. So i got to flip the play. I always want to make the blitzer come the opposite way. Then I'm going to pinch the defense. I'm going to um, slant them outside, bring this guy down to the gap, and then QB contain. That's all I'm really going to do. And you're going to see how this is going to create a lot of pressure. Uh, from a couple of different areas. Like I said, this will give you a lot of switch pressure. You can see the blitzing uh, outside linebacker is the one that comes in and gets the sack. That's the most obvious uh, player that's going to get it, but a lot of times you'll get switch pressure inside. Uh, then you can see here, I mean, I don't know what happened. It just took him a while to get around um, his own lineman. But the, the running back there, by the time, I mean, if, if you'd have got through a little quicker, the running back might have picked him up. But based on the fact that 91 got through, it's, you know, there's nobody to pick him up. You don't have to do the QB contain. That's optional. I'm going to do it this time without it. You can see he just comes, he still rushes straight around and still makes the play. So the QB contain is not necessarily part of what makes it work. Go to replay one more time. You can see the running back didn't even see him. He just comes around. It does get chipped by the receiver for some reason. But uh, but yeah, that's the play. Except we got to come for quarters. So this play here, just basically gonna gonna pinch the entire line. If I can bring these safety down, it's really gonna be best because that's really where the run defense comes from here. But we do have a good, uh, you know, inside alignment is pretty much locked up, outside alignment is pretty much locked up, and this is a pretty good uh, run defense no matter what you're looking at. You can pinch and then spread linebackers, but I find it's best to just bring everybody down and in. Like I said, if you leave this guy out here, I mean, on a formation like this, it doesn't make sense. But he's a good second level defender here. If you think it could be an outside run, you can always carry him out. Like if it's a, if like there's a stretch possibility this side, you can just bring him out here. And you can see how you got four defensive linemen inside, or and two, you know, two wide outside linemen on the outside. And then the safeties can help fill the run lanes on the inside. So right here, we can basically pinch, spread these linebackers hard flat. Like I said, the second level defenders anyway are pretty much going to be these safeties. Which the closer they are to the line of scrimmage, the better. So we got the FS Fire 1. So same setup, really. Going to want to align these guys, though. Um, but yeah, be on the safety once again so that you, you can prevent them from running off. Then pinch your defensive line. Slant them inside. Gas pass. And keep it contained. This is going to be the look. Hopefully with some more switch pressure. Got to be giant on the spot for anybody. I mean, I don't, know, I don't know why the running back didn't even see that guy. But you can see how crazy of a blitz that is. It's really the exact same thing as the previous play where this guy just loops around once again and he looped around the running back entirely but uh, i mean i guess maybe because uh, the, the uh, looks like brandon graham has come through the middle there but this is just your opportunity to use this blitz with cover one man which is a better coverage like i said gotta be on him first so he doesn't go anywhere i'm not even sure i guess pass on that last one but uh, yeah, slant your defensive line uh, inside, although I think I accidentally blitzed all, which is not going to be good. So let's go ahead and let's put him back. I don't even know who Reddick is supposed to be covering. There we go. So yeah, gonna, uh, yeah, I did blitz all linebackers. Where are we at here? Got to fix that. So I got that keep it contain on. Slant it inside. I said, there, we got the setup. So boom. Go ahead, let's watch this work. Like I said, stay home for a half a second. We got this dude coming around the outside once again. And the running back really isn't seeing him. Even with the blocking running back, it's not, it's not helping. So, very glitchy play. Next up, we have the FS Fire 3. So, on this play, the safety walks down the line. All I have to do is QB contain and bring this guy down right here on a blitz. 
and drop back post snap. I could also drop down on the center. It really doesn't matter. But you can see the safety loops around uh, every single time. It's not like the, you know, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it uh, it does loop around. We'll go and we'll do that again. Like I said, I, I think it's best if I pinch the defensive line, but then I have to be on the safety so that I can control him and keep him from walking back. And then this is going to be a little bit better. I mean, it really is better to bring him in a little bit more to the QB contain lane. And you'll see how he loops around a little bit faster. So guessing pass, like I said, staying it for a second, dropping back. You can see, I mean, I did pick a mesh play, so there's going to be a lot of underneath throws available. Probably should have picked something a little bit more conducive to a blitz. So let's do this one more time. Let me say bring this guy here. Slam my guys inside for a little extra. And before I do that, keep it contained. I'll just help that guy get around the, the outside a little bit better. And you can see we actually get a little bit of a switch pressure that time as um, go to the replay. Because of the looping blitz being so close pre-snap, they did a switch uh, where they just basically tried to push that off and he just lets him go inside. And that's why he got that uh, got the pressure the way that he did. You'll get that sometimes. So like I said, beyond the safety, keep you contained. Like I said, slanting him inside is helpful before doing that keep you contained. So standing over this small gap here. So try to get back under these drags. And he's running for his life and throwing a bad pass. So something must have been going on back there. But like I said, it's a good blitz. It's a good coverage. It's a cover three match, which is one of my favorites. It's one of the better ones in this formation. Except we got the cover two man. This is just a good pass defense. All you want to do is align your defensive uh, guys here. And then I typically want to put one of my um, uh, defensive ends into a hard flat on whatever side has the most receivers. And that includes the running back. So I got three on the left side. I'm going to go ahead and put him on a hard flat. You can always put him into a cloud flat. You can really put him in any type of flat that you want. I can put him into a curl flat. It really doesn't matter. I just find hard flats are one of the better ways to go. And it'll just help with some of the man coverage beaters on that side. And it just allows you to really free roam when it comes to some of these other uh, crossing defenders. So that's just one of the better setups there. But you could also put him on a, as I'm messing up here, you can put the put him on a curl flat, you can put him on a, or a, not a curl flat, I'm sorry, a hook, which if you think, you know, there's going to be more passing over the middle, you can give yourself some additional help there. Um, I can go ahead and I can I can use this other side, although we're getting random plays. Inside zones are going to be best against cover too, so that's, I'm not expecting this to be a very good run defense based off of that fact, but it's just a, a good way to have um, additional help in the middle. I was hoping to get like a, an actual um, pass play there. Although I did pick random. So let's go let's do that one more time. Like I said, if the running back goes on a route, i got to follow him. But otherwise, I have somebody helping me use her over the middle of the field. And then, like I said, we're I pinched the defensive line that time. The first time I didn't pinch the defensive line. That's why this is actually improved as far as the as far as the base defense is concerned. But once again, user, whoever's on the running back, you can do whatever adjustment you want. Here, it might make more sense. Like if I see two tight ends, I'm going to hard flat because I think one of them is going to go out into the flat. Except we have the cover four quarters. This is just the best run defense in the formation. Uh, you'll see here, the setup that I'm going to do is going to be baseline, show blitz baseline, which is wide triangle, then right on the left stick, left on the left stick, right on the left stick again. Uh, hitting wide triangle every single time in between. You'll notice that this guy here, which I think is unique to this formation, drops down. If there's no receiver in this area, we'll drop down right into this area here to basically just um, you know hold down better outside run defense, which is perfect because that's what makes this run defense so good. The safeties typically play the run first as long as you don't guess pass. My only other adjustment is going to be to pinch the defense, and then I'll go ahead and slant them outside a lot of times, just try to help with outside runs. I also like to put these guys into hard flats, which is wide triangle then down the right stick to do underneath hard flat coverage. If you set them to five or even zero, if you set them to zero, it's the best run defense. If you set them to five, it's a little bit better against drags and pass plays. And then this is pretty much going to be it. Like I said, if you don't guess pass, you'll have good inside run defense and outside run defense. Uh, as you can see right there, I mean, he just shucked off Chris Jones who bust right through the line, but he still didn't get much. He didn't get anything really. So this is pretty much going to be the look. Like I said, sometimes you get this weird look where this guy comes all the way over here. I don't really want that. You could also pinch the entire defense, which for some reason, this is something that's in the program. I've heard this before with a safety's cross. So that's something you have to be aware of. 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, you really just want to figure out a way to pinch the defensive line and bring these safeties down, which pinching the defense can have that effect, but you might have to manually adjust those safeties, which can be a little bit of an issue. And then this is pretty much the look. Like I said, I still like to slant my defensive line outside. Got to do it twice because I'm in practice mode, but that will also help them maintain outside run lanes. I don't think I actually um, did the hard flat, but you can see how the safeties drop down. That's what makes this run defense so valuable, is it essentially looks like a nine-man run commit. You'll see here, the safeties drop down and play their lanes right away while the cornerbacks drop back you can see the cornerbacks outside all the way in the back there they drop back because they don't want to get beat by anything they react late but at the end of the day the safety is really what fills the lanes anyway you can create a blitz out of this as well i'll go ahead and i'll make my press this time pretty much either one of these outside guys you can send on a blitz just by blitzing them at any point in time as you can see once again we got those safeties crossed which is probably the biggest issue when it comes to defense but i'm going to go ahead i'm just trying to run a blitz so i'm not too worried about it but you can see those guys are crossed that's the biggest issue i'm going to go ahead i'm going to bring this guy down put him on a pass uh on a rush and then guess pass just stop here for a second then drop back and you can see the cornerback gets around the edge i mean he didn't stop the play but you can still see he got him pretty easily so we're going to do that again. Like I said, maybe he's a little too close to the line. Sometimes the angle is uh, is key as we'll just basically do our, our blitz adjustment there. So we can really blitz whoever. Like I said, those safeties crossing is kind of dumb. But, uh, you know, you can see if we can just take away these short routes and then boom, we get an easy pressure and almost get a sack. Next up, we got the linebacker blitz. This here is just a good zero blitz. Whoever's on the running back, whatever saves on the running back, a lot of times I find it's best to just bring down over this gap. Uh, and you can either slant your guys outside or QB contain them. That's really up to you. But I'm just going to stay here for a second and then drop back. And you can see you get a lot of easy pressure as we get a, a forced bad throw there based off of that. I'm going to do that one more time. Although there, I didn't mean to do that. Go ahead and switch them back. He says, this formation can be weird sometimes when it comes to some of the, uh, you know, some of the things that can happen. You can spread the defensive line too. Like I said, there's a lot of different ways you can run this because it's just a, a, you know, your typical man zero blitz. I don't know what type of formation we're in here, but you can see we get a gap pressure, and then you know you can get moss, and that could be a bit of an issue. But still, you know, you're gonna get very quick pressure with a play like this. Go ahead, I'll do that again as I'm messing everything up. Like I said, sometimes I like to pinch my uh, my defense. And like I said, I'm messing everything up with the man coverages here. But we'll go ahead and we'll just come down over this line here. We're going to get a, a unique look here with the crossing linebackers. And it'll still work because we're trying to get the defensive ends off as we get uh, some pretty good run defense. Because we have so many guys flying in, you'll get some pretty good run defense to inside and outside. <coughs> really just trying to spread the line. There we go. As I think I just jumped off sides. We're going to go ahead. We're going to fix that though. Like I said, this here, I'm really trying to get the ends off. So we're just going to, you know, come down over the gap here. Even if it's a run play, these guys will support me. These guys will, will, will come down right behind me and do a pretty good job of stopping those plays. You can see we get an A-gap pressure, although he throws it up. But, you know, I mean, you're seeing the pressure. You're seeing the opportunity. I'm just not using it very well on the backside. You got to do a little bit better job there. But you see a very good play. Next up, we got the SS Blitz 2. So, similar setup to the cover three version. I'm just going to pinch the defensive line, then I'm going to slant them outside. I typically want to have this cornerback in a little bit closer. I have no idea what play we're looking at, by the way. I don't know if there's a block and running back or not, uh, as I just chose random. I typically want to take whoever is using opposite. Like here, we have a tight end who's going to come right off the line. Since I got to come down to the box here, I don't want to take the, the vert hook that's going to jump in front of that route. So I'm just going to come down the box with whoever's on the other side so that I'm not too close to the action because I do have to step down here and then drop back post snap. So here you see it's a play action. Running back goes down a route, we get an instant sack. That's really going to be best. If the running back is blocking, you're still going to have success just as long as uh, the blitzing quarterback is coming off the opposite side. So you see I'm coming down to this gap here. I guess I'm not really sure what the play is. I think it's actually the same play because it looked like the same play. But I didn't really use her at all there. I definitely could have used her that and took that away. But you can see how this can create pressure the exact same way. Cover 2 is not as good as cover, just cover 3 though. So to me, cover 3's version is still better. Next up, we got the SS Blitz 3. 
This is probably my favorite cover three in the formation because it is a matching cover three. Matching cover threes are typically best. If you're going against a bunch like this, you probably want to move this guy to the center just to make sure that you don't give up, um, you know, anything. You know, you can create one play touchdowns, but if the safety is in the center of the field, that won't happen as much. As far as the setup for the blitz, all I want to do is pinch my defensive line, then I want to slant them outside, which is deep head to the left and then down, then deep head to the left and up on the right stick. That will make your defensive lineman point out. In practice mode, you have to do it twice, though. So there, you can see they're pointing out more. This guy here, I typically want him at the line, but I don't want to go full press. So if I can just walk him down, that's perfect. Then I'm going to take my user, just blitz him, and bring him down over the uh, over the center and guess pass. That's all I really have to do. And this will give me a pretty instant uh, edge pressure with the safety. As you can see right there, we actually got two guys, and I think we got a shed as well. Go ahead and we'll watch the replay. Like I said, this is best against, you know, if, if there's not, oh man, we just had uh, Chris Jones just, just completely bull rushed um, uh, uh, Jason Kelsey. But you can see the looping pressure from the cornerback too. So you can see this is going to be best, like I said, if the running back's not blocking. But if he is blocking, just as long as you start the play with the uh, the, the blitzing cornerback opposite side of the, of the running back, even if it's like a play action, he'll basically a lot of times get around that if he gets around it fast enough. Next up, we got the weak safety blitz one. This is basically the exact same thing. I picked random again. Uh, once again, you got to be on the safety, and you have to um, just so he doesn't run off and and you know go back and mess up the whole blitz. So be on the safety, put him in uh, you know cut about five yards off the line. Then whoever is using the running back just got to bring him down. I got to draw. I got to get on the running back the second the play starts if he goes down the pattern, which he did. And you can see we get the exact same pressure and we get better coverage. I mean, if you like man coverage, you're gonna get good coverage here. Go ahead and I'll go to the replay because I really didn't see what happened. I had to make sure they got out on the running back. As you can see, the running back goes out on the route again. He did actually get picked up, but we get switch pressure because when he gets picked up, he allows somebody else in free, and you can see Hertz is running for his life. So a very good blitz. We'll go ahead and we'll do that again. Like I said, this is something where if you want to, you could press. Um, you know, that could help to bring uh, whoever, you know, the cornerbacks down, which could be helpful to jam them and not let them get off the line. And, you know, I'm just guessing pass. Pinching my defensive line, slanting him outside. You can see the cornerback comes in again. And there we get an interception because Hurts just has to throw it up right away so he avoids the sack. Next up, we got the weak safety blitz three. Now, this play here, the safety drops down by himself, but if you make an adjustment, he'll go back, which can mess everything up. So it's really best to get on top of him first and then make the adjustments because now he'll stay home. So it's pretty much going to be the same. Look, I'm just going to pinch the defense and then spread the defensive line, bring this guy down over the gap. Although on a play like this, it might be best, once again, to leave him out there because that tight end can come out on a route right away. It's going to be better on this play to use our seam flat and then, you know, basically use this guy's job after as you can see we get pressure instantly again we get good coverage because once again it's a good cover three match concept and you can see we get the interception but the pressure came in the same way as we'll go ahead and we'll go to the instant replay just to show you i'm picking random play so i have no idea what the what the computer is going to pick but you can see he just gets right around even though the left tackle tries to get over on him he's just too quick this for well, its entire formation is about having a lot of speed on the field and getting a lot of pressure next up we got the cover three lock there's no real setup to this. It's just another unique defense. You have this guy here, man to the running back. You could always change into a hard flat uh, because you have curl flats. I mean, you have your matching concept on the other side. It's just a unique defense. Like, there's nothing really, um, you know, there's nothing really else to it. But you have that free man to do whatever you want. I could always man him to the to this guy. I could always man him to the crosser, although it doesn't let me do that this year for some reason. Uh, but yeah, just manning him to just anybody that you feel needs help is really going to be the way. Next up out of the 2-3 Sam we have the DB Fire 2. This play here I'm typically going to press and then I'm going to blitz one of these uh, linebackers like here. I probably want to blitz this guy because it'll be easier to pick up that tight end. Um, I can also spread the defensive line and keep it contained if I want to, but that's not 100% necessary. This is like third and 15. I might do something like that because it would be very susceptible to run plays. Basically, I'm just going to try to pull back a guard, which you can see there work pretty easily, and we get some crazy pressure around the edge. This is a very high 
uh, speed rush, especially if you're going against mobile quarterbacks. This is my go-to defense. If somebody's running a lot and I want to put some pressure on them, they're running with Lamar Jackson or trying, I'm going to use something like this um, as I messed up the uh, three-play system there. So, like I said, focusing on me in front of 71, I'm going to just walk him back. And he's he, once I walk back, he follows me. And you can see off the edge, we have multiple guys coming. The running back picks up one. But by the time we get the sack, you can see 69. Both guards. That's the point of spreading the defensive line. Guards do not rotate very well. They're not very fast. They're, they both end up blocking nobody, which is the point. You're getting a free rusher because all the speed on the outside, those guards are just going to get whooped. Next up, we got the overload three seam press. We're just going to press, guess pass, and then blitz our linebacker and drop back the exact same way. This is really meant to get somebody off the edge, and you can see this is just another high pressure package. The only real issue when it comes to this play is pressing. Um, you know, you don't have to press, like, you can just walk this cornerback down and have the exact same success because pressing can be an issue when it comes to the cornerbacks, but they're already kind of in a press. So it's like, it's not really the biggest concern. We'll go to the replay real quick just to see how the, the blocking held up. You can see once again, I drop back, 76 blocks nobody. Uh, the guard once again, 69, blocking nobody. This time though, because of the, the, the offensive line could pick up the pressure, I blocked back and the right tackle's not blocking anybody. The running back really is in a precarious situation as he has to take one of these outside cornerbacks or edge rushers. He took the one that he saw first and then the other one just comes off the blind side and just, just picks him up. So very good blitz. This is definitely, I mean, you have a cover two, which is not a very good um, coverage. Cover three matches a much better coverage. So I definitely prefer this blitz over the cover two this year. Next up, we got the cover three cloud. This is just a good passing uh, formation. If I think it's going to be a run play, I'll pinch the defense and slant them outside. But if I'm just expecting, um, you know, it's not really a run defense. It's really more meant to be a pass defense because it's just really hard for people to hit a one-play touchdown against this. There's not a ton of one-play touchdowns that are no, that people know that can really take away these plays. And then you can see, I mean, it's just a decent coverage. It's not uh, anything special, but it's a good coverage to throw in if, you're, if your opponent's hitting a lot of big pass plays. It's a good curveball to throw their way. And a lot of times they don't figure out what they can do with it. Next up is cover four quarters. All I'm going to do is baseline shield blitz baseline to bring the safeties down. I can walk them down even more manually if I want to because the closer they are to the line of scrimmage, the more effective they'll be. I'll also put my hard flats or my outside uh, curl flats to hard flats because this is going to give me the best run defense in the formation and it'll still be a pretty good pass defense too. As you can see, there's, there's nothing really anywhere you can go there. So this is something that you should always have in your audibles. You can pinch the defensive line too if you're expecting anything uh, severe, you know, an inside run of any kind. Like here, if it's going to be an inside run, it's going to be, uh, you know, if it's going to be a run, it's probably going to be an inside zone. And sure enough, it was. I can shoot that gap one more time. And you can see that we just have a very good run defense, whether it's an inside or outside run. You also have a lot of DBs on the field, so it's going to be a very good pass defense as well. Here, I didn't even get the setup in, but you can see it's still really aligned very well as we get another stop. Next up out of the dime normal, we have the DB Blitz Zero. This play here, I'm just going to pinch the defensive line, and then I'm going to also uh, slant them outside, which is D-pad to the left and down, and D-pad to the left and up on the right stick. Then I'm going to press everybody. I'm going to press these corners. I can, motion, I can put these guys where they belong to, just line them up right in front of their defending targets, or their targets. And uh, just, you know, a lot of times I'll bring this guy down, put them uh, in one of these gaps, so they really don't have to because the pressure is going to come in so fast anyway. And then I'm also going to guess pass, and then i got to cover this running back, but it doesn't really matter because the point of this play is the pressure comes in so fast. Uh, it's a really good run defense too, which I'll probably go over here in a minute, but you can see these cornerbacks just come sprinting off the edge, and if they don't get like this one on the right, on the left side here kind of got caught up, but if they don't get caught up, they're just going to come right in and just nail the quarterback every single time. It's actually a pretty good run defense too. I'm gonna pick like random play. So this is one of the better base defenses. It's the reason I'm recording this book. I'm gonna do the exact same setup, hoping to get some run plays. I'd really like this cornerback to be in further um, at the end of the day. Like even if it's not hidden, like it doesn't matter because your opponent won't be able to do anything about it. So like I said, we're gonna do this again. I'm hoping to get some run plays. If it's an inside run play, like this appears that it's going to be, or it was looking like it was gonna be, as we get the, sack, uh, the pressure again. If it's an inside run play, typically these defensive linemen do a really good job 
of stuffing the inside lanes and then these blitzing corners do a really good job of stuffing the outside lanes so I'm doing this one more time heavy pressure package looks like we're gonna have a jet sweep of some kind so that I'm gonna pretty much I mean it's still you can see there aren't any inside or outside run lanes is the point and like I said this is really just one of the best base defenses and it's the reason I'm calling this you don't get weak box because you have a good um, you have a good amounts of um, defensive linemen so even like there they have like a two tight end set I'm not getting bulldozed because I still have the guys I need to stop you know plays like this I'm gonna do this one more time I said I like to you know if it's something like this I can stand back because if it's a run play I don't know what it's gonna be but if it's a run play I can shoot the gap if it's not a run play like there you can shoot the gap also although there obviously would have been better to cover the running back but that is an option shooting the gap if you have a faster linebacker than I have because TJ Edwards is only like a low 80 speed linebacker you can always do that make sure you always align these guys though and I don't know what's going on out here this is something I guess they're doing because there's nobody so I guess I could just use your head but Let's go ahead and let's get this, um, you know, shut this run play down. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, it's a good defense. Good defense everywhere. Good run defense, good pass defense. Next up, we got the Dime Blitz 3. We're going to pinch defense again, press, and then slant outside. After that, um, it's really, you know, I could just basically bring this user down over this gap pre-snap, but it's gonna be hard to get back on that, that bunch, which is gonna be our responsibility. Really just the inside pass play is gonna be the responsibility. And you can see we get some decent pressure, but we also get um, some good coverage. So it's a good play to mix in if you wanted to get away from the uh, the DB fire, um, you know, the DB, uh, DB all out man blitz. We're about to get an inside handoff here. You can see the blitzing cornerback even comes around and stops that play. So it's just a good alternate play to use in the scheme, but it's probably like third down the line as far as best plays go in this formation. Next up, we have the cover four drop contain. This is the best run defense in the formation. I find it's best just to uh, pinch the defense, which is RB, R1 down the left stick, and then manually bring down the safety. That's about it. If I expect a possible run play, like say I'm in a single, going against a single back or something, which I don't necessarily suggest because these are small defensive packages, but if you do, you can just hard flat these guys to try to help with outside runs, set the coaching adjustments to zero, stuff like that, five or zero. This is there. I mean, that hard flat definitely helped me out. Like I said, we're not going to get a lot of pressure. It's not really a pressure defense. It's a, it's really, you know, meant to be a prevent defense, and it's also meant to be a run defense. That's why I'm bringing these safeties down, because th this is really to help the run plays. I don't know if I'll actually get any run plays. We'll find out. Because like I said, I did hit random, but if I don't get a run play pretty soon, I might have to actually switch it up. You see those hard flats are really killing us. We actually get a coverage sack there. Um, like I said, to me, hard flats is one of the better ways to go especially since uh, you know I'm trying to stop um, run plays at the end of the day but it's doing pretty good with the pass plays as well here we go we finally get inside zone you see the safety filled the hole but for some reason didn't actually tackle him but I will go to the replay just to show that because I really thought the safety was going to make the play there I don't know what happened there I, that, that looked like a glitch in the program or something but you can see they walked down if you don't guess pass they walked down the box and he walked right down to make a play but I guess he didn't want to take that heat because he just passed on it like that's total BS but that's why this is the best run defense because these safeties will walk down and fill these lanes This is just a good match coverage that if you zone all the linebackers, you typically get a pretty good um, you know, pass defense over the middle. So if you struggle with pass defense over the middle, this will flood that. You can always pinch your defensive line if you're expecting a run play. Uh, but this is something that, like I said, if somebody's thrown over the middle a lot, you can throw this out there, and it's going to clog up a lot of lanes. You can see the only thing that got open there was a drag, which was like a, a, a zero-yard drag. Um, you can always change your, your flats uh, to whatever you want them to be. Uh, but here, like I said, this is probably going to be a pass play, and we'll probably get crushed. This is not a very good, I'm sorry, a run play we're going to get crushed, because this is not a very good run defense. But you can see we still shot the gap, so it does have possibilities to stop inside runs, but ultimately this is not something you're going to want to call uh, as we're getting another run defense. Let's go ahead and I'll do this again. If it's an inside run, maybe I could shoot it again, because, you know, you do have at least a lot there to stop that inside run, and then boom, I, I didn't even make my adjustment, or else I probably would have took that away. So, yeah, this would pretty much be the setup, I would say. Go ahead and uh, man a line or zone a line, whatever, just to get that guy back. But this is pretty much going to be the look. And we'll just hopefully get a get a pass play here because I picked random. We'll, we'll definitely get a pass play here. So, like I said, I'll stay on my user here, take my side. 
said nothing's really open over the middle there. Just as long as you cover underneath, all the deep stuff is pretty much gonna be covered. Next up, we got the Max Sting 3. So we're just gonna press. That's all we really gotta do. Press. I'd say it's best to put Cox here on a blitz and then just come down over this gap with the user linebacker and pretty much just attack it that way. You could spread the defense, you could put them on QB contains, all that stuff's optional. But at the end of the day, these are really just meant to get around this edge here. As you can see, the cornerback barely got picked up by the running back there. It would have been an instant sack on the play action. Like I said, we'll do the full QB contain, spread the D look, so that maybe we can get around that. Like I said, I'm, I'm doing it a couple times. But the more widespread those outside rushers are, the quicker these cornerbacks can get past. As you can see right there, he get tackled as he threw it away. But the, the pressure is very instant. So one more time, like I said, for some reason, these guys are not spreading on the defensive line sometimes, but it doesn't really matter. It's still going to have a lot of success. So I'm going to go press and release again, and you can see that play action. I don't know why that cornerback can't make a tackle, because that looks like an instant replay, but it was a different snap. Next up, we got the spinner. This player, you just want to press everybody. That's all you really want to do, and you can see how you're really going to have a lot of opportunities when it comes to the blitzing corners. I just have to really peel off and you know cover that running back, depending on what he does. Right there, you can see the running back, it almost gets past the play action. As you can see, we're getting a blitz in super fast. Go and let's watch the replay. It almost got past the play action running back, but the running back did get back around to make the block. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because this cornerback is coming off the edge too. Although that's partially because he got let go by a check and release. So you can pick this up by blocking enough to pick this up, but most people won't do that and you'll get a lot of easy pressure that way. You don't really have to make any adjustments other than pressing though, to be honest with you. And then typically I'll take one of these linebackers and user them over the running back gap because I do have to peel off and get to the running back if he goes out on a route. But you can see, you get some hate gap pressure, you get some side pressure, you get pressure just about anywhere. Except we got the strong eagle slant three. So I'm just gonna basically shift my defense to the right, which is the RBR one button, and then right on the left stick. Then I'm gonna blitz my user, although I'll be honest with you, I could've just stayed down there if I was already controlling him, and put him on a uh, blitz, hover this gap. Sometimes I'll put my guys in QB contained, sometimes it's helpful, but I'm just gonna stay over this gap and then drop back pre-snap, or post-snap rather, over the middle of the field. You can see how you can get a lot of pressure either from the straight A gap or from the outside. Here we go once again. You can see for whatever reason, it's mostly because of the A gap that the tackle just doesn't know who to take and the running back picks that up. But it's just a very confusing blitz because like I said, it's a very, um, you know, with all this speed on the field, a lot of times the lineman can't handle it. Go ahead and I'll do that again. Like I said, it's gonna hover this gap here. I'm not, I didn't keep it contained this time, which like I said, that's definitely, you know, didn't really change the results. This kind of slowed down a little bit. I did notice it did a little bit quicker with the QB contain. I'm going to go one step further and also slant in inside here. And we're going to get a slightly different look. As you can see now, the other guy comes off the side. So it's like there's, there's definitely a lot of different ways to get pressure here. Go to replay one more time. I said that slant inside just got around the running back. I mean, even the cornerback was coming in again. So a very good blitz. Like I said, this looping, this looping reaction is what causes the cornerback to get switched off from the left tackle a lot of times and get that inside leverage. So one more time. I don't know if I've been guessing pass or if I mentioned that, but I do that every single time. Slant inside one more time just to get that... Uh, because I do feel like that's getting a little bit better pressure. Is that slant inside? Although there it gets chopped up. But like I said, that cornerback's getting around every single time regardless. So it's uh, some, somebody's getting in there pretty much every single time. Next up, we got the cover three cloud. This is just a good defense to mix in. There's really no setup. A lot of times I'll try to bring this guy down uh, just to try to help out on the offensive line. Uh, but it really doesn't do too much because I'm really just trying to drop back into coverage. Cover three clouds, just a good defense. It's something to mix in that will give your opponent a lot of problems. It's hard to hit a one-play touchdown against it because of what this safety back here is doing. Uh, it's not like your typical cover three. He's kind of in like a cover two. So this has always been one of my favorite formations because the coverage is so unique and a lot of people don't know how to deal with it. Next up, we have the cover four quarters. It's going to be your best run defense in the formation, just baseline, show blitz, baseline like we've been doing. That's really just to bring these safeties down and bring them into play more 
when it comes to uh, any potential run plays. So, you know, this is best, like if you're in a shotgun look like this, you can really use this to shut down these inside zones. So this is a one, I mean, cover four is a pretty good pass defense this year as well. But at the end of the day, this is really just here because I want to have something that's uh, my best run defense in this formation. That's going to be this particular play. Next up, we have the Overstorm Brave. It's a good zero blitz. Um, just, you know, I'm going to use or whoever's on the running back and typically just align everybody. And I don't know what happened there, but you can see uh, <laughs> that was weird. It looked like it was on like fast, like fast motion. I don't know what happened there, but it kind of, I don't know if the game kind of glitched, but you can see how quickly these guys get in. The running back can't pick everybody up. Um, it's just a good, uh, I mean, the, the, the tackle ended up blocking, no, or the, uh, the center ended up blocking nobody, which is kind of weird. But uh, you can see, this is a very good blitz. Man zero blitzes are very overpowered right now in Man 23. Next up, we got the cover four drop. So we're just gonna hit Y triangle every time before we do our next adjustment. We're gonna baseline show blitz baseline. It's gonna be right on the right stick, left on the right stick, and then right on the right stick again. Like I said, that's the that's the setup. If you're expecting an inside handoff, you could pinch the uh, defensive line. Sometimes I'll spread the linebackers to take away outside lanes and hard flat. And this will be pretty much the run defense, or at least the best run defense that I can put together in this formation. As you can see, the first play is an inside handoff, and my opponent gets nothing. If it's an outside handoff, like I said, the same setup works the same way. You can set your heart flats to zero, giving it a little bit of an advantage when it comes to getting outside. But you can see this is one of the better run defenses in the entire game, especially when it comes to these type of packages. Next up, we got the cover four drop. So we're just going to hit Y triangle every time before we do our next adjustment. We're going to baseline show blitz baseline. It's going to be right on the right stick, left on the right stick, and then right on the right stick again. Like I said, that's the that's the setup. If you're expecting an inside handoff, you can pinch the uh, defensive line. Sometimes I'll spread the linebackers for, to take away outside lanes and hard flat. And this will be pretty much the run defense, or at least the best run defense that I can put together in this formation. As you can see, the first play is an inside handoff, and my opponent gets nothing. If it's an outside handoff, like I said, the same setup works the same way. You can set your heart flats to zero, giving it a little bit of an advantage when it comes to getting outside. But you can see this is one of the better run defenses in the entire game, especially when it comes to these type of packages. Next up, we got the LB Blitz One. So this is just a cover one version of the Loop Blitz. I'm going to pinch the defense, or pinch the defensive line, spread the linebackers. You can walk them into these QB contain lanes. It's going to be helpful. Then I'm going to put this dude on a blitz, and I'm going to use the running back after the snap. Just basically drop down over this gap. Whatever route the running back goes on, i got to take them. And you can see the reason I'm trying to work this into this package is because cover one's one of the best man coverages when it comes to, defense, comes to defense. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that again. You don't have to uh, get these guys in the QB contain lanes. You can leave them out, and they're still going to rush at a good angle. So let's go ahead and let's do that one more time. And we're basically getting that pressure right up the middle there, which is definitely unique. That's a switch pressure result once again. Let's go to the replay. Like I said, you'll see how the switch pressure just basically passes them off and just lets them right in. I mean, that's really that's really the point of this type of blitz and having these guys rush inside. So let's go and let's do that again. Set QB contain. You don't really want these guys in that lane though. You really don't want them in that uh, that that. Um, you know, let's have them come in by themselves. I don't really want them on that QB contain lane. So let's go ahead and let's leave them out. And waiting for the ball to hike here. Like I said, got to cover my guy. And boom, we get another A gap because of that switch concept that really doesn't work too good. It's not really an A gap. It's more a B gap. But you can see once again, they just let him in free. So got our QB contain on. We're going to do it one more time. Like I said those delayed linebackers really just have a, a unique effect as we get another sack. So the running back's definitely got to be blocking to pick that up. Next step out of the 3-3 nickel, we have the linebacker blitz zero. This is the meta loop blitz they tried to patch. All I'm going to do is pinch the uh, the linebackers, which D-pad to the left and D-pad down. Then I'm going to QB contain, guess pass, and then bring my user down just a little bit over here, down behind the, the tackle. This is pretty much how everybody's doing it. This is one of the meta blitzes. You can see typically these guys loop around. Um, the only thing that can really, I mean, you could press to try to take away these short throws. Like if you have time, you can try to walk these guys down. The running back's not that important uh, in reality because that's probably going to be my first responsibility. So this will help to take away uh, some of these. And you can see the loop comes around. But you, this will help to take away some of these short routes. As you can see that time, the quarterback had nowhere to go. We'll go ahead and watch the replay. Like I said, you've probably seen this online a million times. The linebackers typically loop 
all the way around and just get pressure. It's pretty much guaranteed pressure. Even the one that got picked up eventually was coming around the block here. You can see you get picked up by a, by, a, by a running back too. But a lot of times you'll see both of these guys flip around. Except we got the Nickel Blitz 3. This play here, I typically like to pinch the defense. That's all I really have to do. Then I'm going to guess pass, put my user on a blitz, and then QB contain one more time. The difference between pinching this defense and pressing is the cornerbacks won't get caught up the same way. So I could always come over one of these uh, guards, but it's always best to do it the furthest from the blitzing quarterback possible, and then just stay home for a second before you drop back. And you can see we just get crazy pressure from like multiple people. The cornerback doesn't necessarily take the best angle, because you can see it causes the switch pressure, which is the linemen try to pass guys off and to a point where it just basically lets them all free you can see the whole right side of the line the center the guard and the tackle all are trying to switch and it's just to the point where it doesn't work because they try to switch too much and it just lets these guys come in free so a very good switch pressure blitz go ahead and I'll do that again like I said just come down away from all that Try to stay home, press and release. And you can see this time the cornerback just comes straight in. So cover three is a better coverage than cover two. And you can see how you can get pressure in multiple ways. Next up, we got the Tampa two. To set up this blitz, just pinch the defensive line, QB contain, blitz, uh, and then blitz both these linebackers really because you need an additional blitzer. This is pretty much going to be the setup here. Hover this gap here and then drop back post snap. It's going to get the cornerback right off the edge there. And you can see we actually got two guys, the linebacker and the cornerback both got off the edge on both sides. Although I do think the cornerback actually got caught up a little bit. So you can see the cornerback here, like I said, he just kind of runs into the, the, the tackle's leg. He didn't really get blocked at all. And then this guy here just kind of loops around. It's the same principles as the loop blitz. You're just doing it out of a cover two with different players. Next up, we got the cover one thief. And we're going to go with um, the, the bench. It's a good pass play. We're going to pinch the entire defense, which is RB, R1 down on the left stick. Then we're going to bring our blitzing safety here down. And we're going to you know, just leave him back here, put him on a QB contain, put him on a blitz, and then put him in the QB contain lane. Then we're going to bring our user down here and guess pass. And we try to pull this lineman back, and then you can see how nobody we eventually get a looper there, but might have brought him in a little too close to the line. So bring him down, QB contain, get him in that QB contain lane. And we're in a good spot. So let's do that one more time. Pinch the defensive line. Stay home for half a second before dropping back on the running back. You can see the pressure loops in, but like I said, it's it's not the fastest blitz. It's very consistent, but it gives you an opportunity to run cover one man in this particular package because this is, you know, cover one man's a very good defense. So let's do that one more time. Like I said, just got to drop on this running back here. Got flattened, and we give away a lane, but he just throws it away. Let's do that one more time. So the hardest part is just bringing Epps down. And now it won't let me, now it won't let me get off of this guy. And there we go. Controller dying and all kind of stuff. Still worked out. And then boom, we get that loop coming in over the center this time. Coming up the middles, we get a really easy sack. Which sometimes can happen that way. Sometimes they'll just they'll switch like that, and then you'll see. I mean, even if we were ran outside, the switch would have still worked on the outside too. Next up, we're going to do the under smoke. Just going to press, pinch the defensive line, QB contain, guess pass. I got the uh, the running backs. Um, not even my responsibility from the looks of this, so I can really just drop back and use her however I want to use her. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're just going to stay on for a second. You can see we got guys coming from all over the world. And uh, he threw a bomb up, but it wasn't, you know, the pressure was coming in too quick. So, like I said, pinch the defense. Keep it contained. Guess pass. Bring your blitz user down over here. Like I said, everybody's got a responsibility. And as long as we stay on that for a spot for a second, even even with a pass blocking running back, you can see there's just they're just wreaking havoc out here. And the coverage is tight. The coverage is good. So we got good coverage all over the place. Now you could always user the guy on the running back too, and just leave this as the you know leave the blitz as it is. Like I said, now I just have to cover the running back if he goes out in a pattern. This is also an option. Now you can see we get crazy pressure once again. If I had faster linebacker, he'd probably have been sacked instantly. So this is definitely a good blitz to use in this formation. Decent run defense too. 
But I will choose some run plays. Go over to concept. Like I said, this is something that um, I could use with this guy who right now has some weird, uh, you know, whatever um, thing on him because I guess he's not really being, you know, whatever he's going to be. But yeah, you see right there, like I said, it's a good run defense. Takes up, takes up a lot of inside lanes. You're not getting bulldozed the way that you probably should be. Got a couple free defenders once again here. Not really sure why it does that, but um, you know they're in, they're in uh, they're in good uh, good run fits as you can see right there. They shut off that outside run. So I'm just basically pinching the entire defense at this point. On this play, I'll use the guys on the running back, and we can see how we can just you know we're just shooting gaps here from all over the place. As this is one of the better defenses out there. It's super fast, super glitchy. Let's go ahead and let's do this one more time. Like I said, I'm always going to use the guy on the running back, even though it's Darius Slay, one of the best corners. And you can see we can shoot gaps there too because obviously I uh, put random run play. So I know it's going to be runs. But if you know your opponent's going to run, by all means. So there we go one more time. Like I said, you want to make sure this guy's aligned though. Aligned in front of that tight end. You don't want to give an inside release or anything like that. And that was actually the best run. It was an outside run. But at the end of the day, you know, it's a, that's probably where it's going to be weakest is to the outside because the cornerbacks drop back. But if you have it like here where you have that um, that extra defender outside in the uh, QB contain, he's actually going to drop down that run very good. You can see he drops down there. He didn't, didn't make the tackle, and then I missed on mine. But you can see he cuts off the play. So when those, the, when those things come up, they're actually really helpful as far as the outside run defense. Like right here, this is going to be, you know, he's going to he's going to cut that off outside and make him work back inside, making it a good defense. Was that a fumble? Look like a fumble animation. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.